This video will explain the AC GAN model. AC GANs build on the idea of class conditional GANs. Class conditional GANs extend the original GAN framework by adding in uh, prior information in the form of a class label. If you have like CIFAR 10 with 10 classes, this class label would be a one hot vector with a one indicating the class, like maybe one in the cat index and then zeros in all the other classes. What the AC GAN does is it builds on the idea of having a class conditional prior input and it tasks the discriminator with reproducing that input. So when the generator receives a class label to generate a cat, the discriminator has to not only predict real or fake, but it also should label it as a cat. So this just shows the uh, loss function that's formed now that the discriminator is made up of two parts, real and fake, and then a uh, classifier that predicts the class labels of the real and generated images. So what they do is they take the ImageNet data set with 1,000 classes and they split it into 100 different AC GANs, each with 10 classes uh, that they're classifying the labels on. So they experiment with this and they try to take apart and uh, have more classes in each AC GAN, but they find that 10 works the best and as they try to uh, increase the number of classes in each model, they have uh, mode collapse in the generator. So another thing they want to know is they achieve 128 by 128 images with the AC GAN. But they want to make sure that uh, this isn't just because of like a naive uh, upsampling. Like you could really just generate 32 by 32 images with a GAN and then just do a nearest neighbor interpolation and, and call it 128 by 128. So what they do is they uh, test the discriminability in high resolution and low resolution samples to guarantee that they are actually adding information in the higher resolution sampling. So what they do here is they uh, downsample images and they feed it to a pre-trained inception network that is trained on ImageNet and they uh, have it see like what kind of classification accuracy it achieves on different resolutions. And they find that the 128 by 128 model has a much higher accuracy relative to the 64 and the 32. And then generally they find that with the real data, 84% of the ImageNet classes are easier to discriminate at 128 by 128 compared to 32 by 32. And this is interesting too because it, it thinks about like what if you had like a thousand twenty four by a thousand twenty four but you couldn't really do that right now because of the model size and the computational complexity of that but it is likely that if you had really high resolution data sets that you would have an easier time uh, with classification models. So another cool thing that they do is they show how the nearest neighbor analysis looks. So they take the samples from the AC GAN and then they go and use an L1 distance to grab the uh, most similar examples in the ImageNet data set. And this shows uh, sort of like the timeline, the AC GAN compared to the unsupervised DC GAN in the left that was uh, improved by Salomons et al. So their paper, uh, they don't use any class labels. And on the right, it shows how class labels, in addition to this AC GAN extension, can really improve the quality of generated images. So in conclusion, uh, they have uh, all of their not all there, but they have uh, 10 generated images from each class hosted at this link. And they discuss how this could be extended to any generative framework and especially audio synthesis. So thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe to Henry AI Labs.